You are watching TFI. Greetings, salutations! Welcome to TFI! I know, I'm sorry. Yes, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is a, a waffly video of sorts. Just a, a get stuff off my chest kind of a video. Completely unedited, unscripted, unprompted, no agenda, no bullet points, nothing. Uh, just some things I want to talk about. Uh, I was staring at the clock the other day, thinking to one's self, Oh, look, it's January. That means it's the, the, anniv the anniversary of the channel. <laughs> and... Uh, it's six years since I started doing this, 12th January 2004, and uh, that's the number which sort of smacked me in the face and uh, got me thinking, because uh, six, uh, six years is a long time to be doing something, and it made me reflect on how things have gone, how things are now, and what I should be doing with my life moving on into the future. So let's just have a talk about that. I just want to get some stuff off my chest. Viewing is optional. You don't have to watch this. Yeah, I just thought I'll um, I'll say some stuff that uh, I've been wanting to, to to put out there, but there's never really been, you know, it doesn't fit in, in most regular videos. And yeah, we'll just, we'll just have a chat. So thank you to start with to everyone who's came on board uh, over the last few years. Uh, it's probably the ultimate compliment uh, and validation when someone watches the video slash work that you've done and says, oh, I want to see more from this guy. Yeah, I'll subscribe. Uh, or even support him through whatever means of support are available. It's quite endearing. So thank you very much to everyone for that. Everyone who's interacted by emails or comments and let me know that they watch my videos in schools and universities or they play my videos in schools or universities uh, all around the world. It's quite surreal. So thank you very much to everyone for that. Uh, yeah, the channels overall had a very positive impact on me, uh, personally and professionally, and, and not just that, but also the, the reputation that I've gained from uh, doing these videos within the, the Autodesk community, within Autodesk themselves, with the people that use it. Uh, it's something that I didn't really think about when I first started this, but it's 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 happened. Um, my name seems to be out there in the Autodesk space quite strongly, which is which is a good thing, and that's something that obviously I don't want to diminish. I want to keep pushing that forward. Uh, there's all kinds of opportunities have arisen from the channel, which just never would have happened without it. So, yeah, that from that point of view it's it's been a positive experience but obviously not without the work not without its hard work uh and that's i guess where i get into how i feel about things now because after six years uh, one tends to reflect on on six years uh, in a way that you think to yourself if i knew that it was going to be like this in this state uh, six years ago would I have started doing the channel knowing where it would be in six years time? And honestly, probably not. Because uh, even six years ago, when you're starting off a, a YouTube channel, you know that the first couple of years are always a bit rocky, quiet. It's a lot of hard work, but then it pays off. You hear all the big creators say that. There's a couple of years of just slugging it away and not really knowing what you're doing, where you're going, people don't know who you are, but then you get your break and you you explore from there. And that's just not happened for me. <laughs> and after six years, I'm kind of of the opinion now, it ain't going to happen. Which, I've, I've talked about that in the past, uh, just thinking yeah, it probably will still happen, uh, but I'm still, I'm disappointed that it hasn't yet. And of course, people try and reassure you with well you know you've done good and the videos have helped people out and uh helped me out and which is which is great always is great but um i don't think anyone really other than the wife and the close family really understand what it's what's been involved in in me carrying this channel on uh and putting the, the you know making sure the stuff gets done around my day job and everything else that was happening uh, at one point, I had two day jobs for, for about four years of the six. Um, two different contracts in two different parts of the UK, which, um, whilst also being self-employed. 
uh, and then having to do, not having to, but doing this afterwards uh, and at weekends and whatnot. So it's been extraordinarily hard work. And honestly, I'm not satisfied with the, the, the size of the channel and the numbers at this point in time. I'm not, that's not to say I'm unhappy with anyone that's watching it. Obviously, that's not the case. I'm, I wish I could take everybody who's subscribed and then just make more copies of them people because they're the, the, they're the best. But, um, yeah, it, it is, it is because of the, I mean, I know why it is. It's, well, I mean, assume it, <laughs> this is why it is. It could be other reasons, but, uh, it's probably because of the market that I'm in. I'm in a niche within a niche, you know, engineering, and then that's a niche. There's only so many people interested in that. And then I'm operating within the Autodesk space, uh, specifically at the start of the channel, Inventor, which has a very small number of people who even know what it is, let never alone use it. Uh, never mind how many actually search YouTube for videos on it. So it was a very small target market that my videos were pitched at. Um, so moving on from that, uh, what am I doing to combat it? Uh, well. A few years ago, I moved away from being an exclusive Inventor Tips and Tricks channel. Anyone still watching this who still gets annoyed when I do something that's not an Inventor video, I, I honestly don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's not been an Inventor Tips and Tricks channel exclusively for many years now. But the reason I moved away from that was because I knew that I knew how much work was involved in, in pushing this forward. And there was that, that payoff, that growth, that reward was never going to happen through just inventor content, just purely down to the absolute minimal target market. Uh, not just that, boredom. Can't just keep doing inventor tips and tricks forever. Uh, fatigue, running out of material. You know, once you've organically gone through all of the issues and uh, tips and tricks that you tend to come across day in and day out in your day job. And you've out you've just outed them all of your head in individual form you run out of things to do there's always things to do even right now there's still videos on inventor that i haven't done but i have to now i'm at a point now where my day job's changed i'm not an inventor kind of user manager anymore so i'm not experiencing issues day in and day out so now i have to do inventor content i have to actually go out and find it and then figure out whether it's useful, structure it into some kind of video format. Uh, if does it make sense? Will it work? What materials shall I use? How shall I plan it? How shall I present it? Uh, and it's just overall, it's not worth the reward uh, in terms of views on a video really uh, for, for just doing that. Uh, and that's evidenced. If you go through the back catalog, if you look at any videos that I've done on non-inventor stuff like laptops and pcs and performance tests those videos get exponentially more views than the inventor videos the inventor videos get one or two thousand views max really unless it's a proper high level hard-hitting tutorial or a what's new video which will always happen here uh so that's another reason why and then the third reason is just purely because of natural organic user drop off uh, what i mean by that is we've all done it it's completely natural you, you you go through a phase in your life where you think i really want to learn this thing i really i'm i am going to learn this program or you get a new job and you're required to learn that program so you search for videos you start learning you watch a few videos and then you either finish what you think is the learning process and you've you've done enough and then you just stop watching the videos from that point or you end up changing jobs internally get promoted move from a draftsman up to an engineer or an engineer across to a project manager or or whatever a senior engineer and you're now in charge of managing and handling resource and um you're not using the CAD systems anymore or you change job completely or you retire or you're a student and you learn an inventor and then you move off into industry and you end up on SolidWorks. You know, there's all kinds of reasons why people start watching my videos and then stop. And that's not sustainable. <laughs> and I've seen that across the six years. It's, I've even spoke to people that that's happened to and uh, multiple people that that's happened to. So, um, it's not a sustainable, uh, area for a channel to thrive in really just doing one software application the software could completely die you know it's it's not going to this one really but it could it's not really a good idea to focus on just one thing anyway 
point being, that's just a couple of minutes of, of saying what really didn't really matter, which is I'm not focusing on just inventor stuff anymore, but the channel will always be Autodesk centric. It'll always have an, an element of Autodesk software to it because that's my background, that's my history, that's my area of expertise. And I just have to try and source in other areas of interest for me, which tie in with the theme of what I've started here. Because what I can't do is just completely f just flip flop onto something totally unrelated. Uh, that wouldn't work. That would, everything. You, there's many examples of people who haven't done that and lessons to be learned, uh, which it it just doesn't work. So. That's what's going to happen moving forward, and that's the reason why I need to. I just, I just need to find other things to cover that I'm interested in, which tie in with the theme, uh, but will also let the channel grow uh, to a point which I would be happy with. Uh, and, and also the the this whole situation with trying to work with brands and get samples of products. That's probably one of my biggest sources of frustration right now. I'm not gonna. I'll not go right into it because I've got all kinds of access to grind with this. But because of the size of the channel that mine is, I'm not re even on the radar for a lot of companies when it comes to sending out samples to uh, to do reviews and tests on, which is a huge problem because I can't do videos without them. <laughs> and um, everything I've done so far, I've pretty much bought myself, bar one or two things. Uh, that 99 quid laptop, bought that. I've got a Dell XPS laptop review coming up. I bought that. Uh, Alien, my laptop. So everything's been financed by me, uh, which is, you know, you when you get 20 to $30 off of a video in terms of ad revenue, it's not financially viable to be doing that on a regular basis. So it's frustrating because this channel has huge value to a lot of brands. My audience is the target market of so many brands out there but they don't see the value in that they just see the number of eyes that could potentially look at the video they don't really factor in the fact that if they throw their product in front of three million eyes on a big tech gaming channel those eyes are from people who are pretty poor and broke and can't afford their product whereas my audience are they're professionals engineers and you know mature students uh it's it's, it's laughable honestly it's laughable um I went to Autodesk University in Vegas in November. There was probably 8,000 people attending. Most of those were Autodesk staff, but there was, I would say, several thousand members of business, engineering sector uh, attended Autodesk University. And they've got this expo hall. And the expo hall is like CES. It's just big stands where companies come in with their desktops, their laptops, their uh, scanning equipment, whatever else, drone equipment, you name it, anything to do with engineering, if you can expo it, if you can exhibit it, you can be in the expo floor. And they've got platinum partners, the likes of NVIDIA, the likes of AMD, the likes of Intel, uh, Lenovo, Dell, all the big players, Unreal Engine, Unity, the, just everyone who's anyone is there. And these platinum sponsors, they probably, so I've heard, pay in excess of a hundred thousand pounds or dollars to be a platinum sponsor and have a booth at Autodesk University to put their products in front of around 8,000 people coming through the exhibit hall. And, I mean, when you hear those kind of numbers, does it even need saying, you know, if the likes of Dell, if they're willing to spend a hundred thousand dollars to exhibit in front of 8,000 people, and here I am, with 50,000 of their target market watching my videos and they won't even reply to an email from me. That's why I am as frustrated and <laughs> as just beat down as I look. And I really am. I, I, I really am. I, I'm at the end of my tether with this whole situation because they, I went through a phase around a year ago of sort of trying to email. It's so difficult, almost impossible to get the email addresses for for the people that actually can help you out and, and work with you. And when I found some, just completely blanked. Uh, there's a lot of, not a lot, a few companies have saw the value of my channel, the likes of 3D Connection. Uh, I have managed to get through to NVIDIA, which was really good. I had the help of uh, one of the Autotest guys. So I've managed to make contact with NVIDIA uh, and they've, they definitely see the value in the channel. So uh, 
mentioned them earlier on didn't mean that to be in a negative context because nvidia really do see the value so so do hp but the contact that i've got at hp's in a different she's not in the pr slash marketing team so good contact to have probably not the right one when it comes to sampling uh social media um but apart from that yeah uh, logitech is another company i might have created a relationship with um but i really want to get in with amd i desperately desperately want to sample their thread rippers because We've just seen the 3990X released at CES, or announced at CES, 64 cores of CPU power. The use cases for that in our work is incredible. Rendering, uh, real-time ray tracing with the likes of RED, possibly real-time ray tracing in VR, uh, if the denoiser on the CPU could... Or was it G anyway, if the CPU could be utilized to make the real-time ray tracing into the VR headset any better, that's the one to do it with. CFD, ANSYS, you know, any kind of finite element analysis, you name it. There's so many use cases for that. There's so many people who think, I need a better PC. What is the best that money can buy? That is it. Yeah, honestly, when that's released, it's going to be sent out to gaming channels who you'll see a dozen videos of that Threadripper testing WinZip and Crisis games and Doom. Do you know what I mean? And crunching fake video compression algorithms because that's the best that they can come up with. It's just frustrating. I, don't, I'm, I am bitter. I'm not, I'm not going to get away from it. I'm bitter and I'm jealous is not the right word. I'm just bitter about it because it's, uh, it's frustrating. And it's not helping my channel. Really, that's what it all boils down to. And I'm not sure what I've got to do to try and break down those barriers and get in the circle of trust and, and get involved. It's, it's so frustrating. Um, but it's got to happen. So from this point onwards, I guess, what I'm, I guess what this is all coming down to is after six years, as grateful as I am for everything that's happened so far, as pleased as I am with everything that I've accomplished so far, I have to see better results from myself and the stats on the channel moving forward and quick, uh, just purely because of how much of my life this endeavour has consumed. Um, and I'm not sure at this point what I can do to accelerate that. Uh, back through there, there's a new room getting built on the side of the house, which is going to be my new office because I've completely run out of space in this room. Uh, Christ, my 17 minutes. Old. I did say it was a waffly video. But yeah, I'm out of space in this room. You know, I've got two gaming chairs in here. The wife sits in there when she cuts in from work and has a quick chat. But I've got like a sound bar sat on a subwoofer with a PC under there. And there's a PC behind the chair and there's a monitor there. And VR headsets on shelves. That cupboard there is absolutely stacked. It's rammed. I've got cables. I've got no. I've got no space for camera equipment to have like a desk where I can sit in front of it pro with a product and talk about it with a fixed microphone. Every time I do a video, it's always like I've got to pull stuff out the cupboard and get the lighting pulled. You know the the ring lights over. Sorry, <laughs> the, the ring lights here, LED ring light, and I've got to pull that out and then set that up. And it's it's a nightmare, absolute nightmare trying to record anything, uh, and it deters me at times. So once I've got that new room set up, that should accelerate content creation which i'm looking forward to uh the walls will be thicker as well so i won't disturb anyone or the wife when i'm chatting away like this uh gone midnight uh because it's an extension it's done over the garage so all four walls are going to be pure thick brick and block work um so yeah that's that's pretty much all i really think i wanted to get out uh again just thank you to everyone who's followed me along um nothing really is going to be changing other than my expectations for the channel's growth moving forward um i'm just hoping that i can break down some of the barriers that youtube's put in front of me and just let the channel just breathe really and, and expand further whether that needs another name change perhaps i don't know um but i, I still need to stay true to what the channel's always been about or else I think that just completely wrecks the algorithm 
and it would obviously annoy a lot of people that have subscribed already for what they thought they were getting but then uh, that's not coming anymore but then honestly at this point I don't know how many of those 50,000 subscribers that I have right now are still actually actively watching this you know I'm, I could have had 50,000 people subscribe on the back of inventive tips and tricks and then they've all tailed off and there might only be a couple of thousand left and what I really wouldn't want to do is like stay absolutely dead set on something that I don't particularly want to explicitly focus on for only a handful of people <laughs> when everyone else is like yeah I mean, just, just do what you want <laughs> so yeah I don't, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky place to be in I might have to make some tough decisions moving forward but don't panic um even if it means moving the inventor stuff off onto a different channel, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have, it's got just some thinking out loud to do and uh, decisions to make. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, a couple other things I might change as well. The, the Patreon that I've got going, I might cancel the Patreon uh, because I've got a few other sources of income, which frankly just completely eradicates Patreon just blows it out of the water. Uh, things like affiliate codes on Amazon, uh, the Autodesk affiliate links. So if anyone buys a license from Autodesk, if you use one of my links, I'll get a, a, a pretty decent sizable percentage of your license fee, which goes to me instead of Autodesk. It doesn't cost you any more, but I get a big cut of that license fee. Uh, that, that just one license or one license purchase through my affiliate link would pretty much be worth more than the an entire month of, of Patreon. So I'm considering doing that. Um, and I've, I've always wanted to bring back live streams as well. I loved doing the live streams. One, doing live streams was one of those things where I would like be a bit nervous when I started, but once I got going, two hours had gone by. Two hours would go by in a flash and I'd, I'd be loving every second of it but it's tricky in here with the there's always something happening in the house whether the dog needs to go outside into the garden whether i've got contractors now working outside banging on the walls coming in and asking us questions and wife coming in from work in half an hour there's always something happening wife gets in from work she wants to have tea you know i'm just i'm just a normal person you know what i mean i can't just lock myself away and dedicate six or seven hours to, to just me without any interruptions don't know why anyone would think that i wouldn't but you just sometimes you, you see people doing live streams and they're streaming for like seven or eight hours and you're like how on earth do you even do that i don't know i don't know anyway um that's probably it i'm sure there's something else that i was wanting to talk about but i've completely forgot about probably not probably not um yeah don't don't Panic if you're thinking, oh no, I don't want to, I don't want the channel to change. It's not really going to. It's, everything's going to stay as it is. All that's changed is my expectations, my uh, requirements for the channel's growth. Basically, I want to be at 100k. Once I hit 100, in the first two or three years of doing the channel, I wanted to hit 10k, and it felt like once I hit 10k, that would be it. It, it would just grow organically but fast, uh, and it didn't. And it's taken a lot of time to get up to 50 from 10. Uh, three, three or four, four years, I think. Um, which is very, very slow growth. Very slow. Um, so I want to get to 100k. I think once you get to 100k, that's when you start getting noticed by marketing teams and, and PR, PR staff. So... I don't want to be at 100k for any any vanity reasons. It's not so I can brag about it. It's not so I can be in any kind of super secret club, you know, and be one of the guys. You know, it's just purely so you can be established and you've got that to use to get the attention of people that can actually help your channel. That's purely it. But in order to get to 100k, I have to I have to do other stuff other than CAD. Uh, because 100k is a sizable percentage of how many people in the world use Inventor. So it said, uh, I've got to reach people who don't just use Inventor. And once I reach those, I can't alienate them by then spamming their sub boxes with Inventor videos when they're like, I saw a laptop video and now this is appearing in my subs feed? What, what is this? So, yeah, that'll do, that'll do. So 
don't, don't I don't need any. I, I, as much as I appreciate it, honestly, I, I don't need to be to be told that uh, everything's okay and uh, that I should be happy with everything that's happened so far. I'm I'm, I'm fine, genuinely. I, I am. I'm fine. I, it's just an expectations thing, and after six years. Uh, if I was where I'm at now, after three years, I'd probably be absolutely buzzing, but because it's hit the six-year mark, and it's like, right, shit needs to change now. Shit needs to start happening, <laughs> or it's like, I need my life back. I really, I'd really need my life back. Um, so that's where we're heading, mate. That's where we're heading. Always going to be Autodesk Focus, because that's my spiel, that's my thing. But just dragging in other things, laptop reviews for people that use Autodesk software and other CAD software, monitor reviews because everyone uses a monitor. It's nice to know what monitors are good, whether a monitor is nice to use. Is have a, we don't really care about the likes of picture quality and color accuracy, all that nonsense. But is it a decent laptop? Does it have a decent panel? It doesn't blind you. Happy with that. Keyboards, mice, other peripherals. If anyone who subscribed just for inventor tips and tricks kick off, kicks off at me because I've got a mouse or a keyboard review on my channel, then I, I can't articulate enough how unimpressed I will be at that and how fast I, those people will just be blocked because I do not need that in my life. Trust me on that. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, but everything that I do will always be relevant in some way to people who work with CAD and are in that industry. Um, It'll never deviate from that. Not on this channel anyway. Okay, 26 minutes of a channel update. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm on something. If I'm thinking now of things to talk about, it's probably time to knock it on the head because that's all I've got. So yeah, thanks to everyone who's stuck around over the six years. Uh, thanks to anyone who's new. Thank you to anyone who might come in the future. Uh, if you do come, you won't be watching this. <laughs> Why would you? Um, Reet, cheers, mate. And I'll see you in the next, and the next, and the next, and the next one in 2020. So, toodles for now.